today on Sly Guys, Sugar Glass. Welcome to Sci Guys, I'm Ryan. And I'm Adam. On today's episode, we're making sugar glass. And a big shout out to Miss Hardy's 8th grade science glass from New Jersey. What are you doing? Mm. You gotta keep your eyes on the camera. Mm. I am! Through the glass. Glass is an amorphous solid. That means it does not have a defined crystalline structure. It is also hard, but brittle. The equipment and ingredients you're gonna need for this episode includes a big bag of white sugar, white corn syrup, cream of tartare, which can be found down the baking aisle, a mixing tool, preferably silicone or metal, not wooden. Candy thermometer. Aluminum foil. A big pot. And measuring cup and measuring spoons. The safety equipment we're going to need for today's experiment includes an apron or lab coat, goggles, and gloves to protect from spills and splashes. For our younger viewers, adult supervision is required because the liquid glass can be very hot and the hardened glass can have sharp edges, so make sure you wear gloves for both. The first step in your experiment is to mix all your ingredients together into your pot. Mix in three and a half cups of sugar, one cup of white corn syrup, two cups of water, and a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartare. With all your ingredients in the pot, thoroughly mix them together. The next step is to put your mixture on the stove over medium-high heat. While your pot begins to warm up on the stove, use the aluminum foil to create a mold that you'll pour your liquid glass into. In this example, we'll be lining a cookie sheet with aluminum foil. As the sugar mixture warms up on the stove, continually stir it. This will help prevent the sugar from burning to the bottom of the pot. Once your solution begins to boil, it's going to start thickening up. At this point, you're going to want to use the candy thermometer to test the temperature of your solution. As the temperature of your solution rises, it's going to get thicker and thicker. Once the temperature of your solution reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to want to remove it from the stove. Once removed from the stove, quickly pour your solution into your aluminum foil mold. With your liquid sugar poured into your mold, tip it back and forth until the mold is completely covered in liquid sugar. Leave your glass to cool and harden for a couple of hours on a level surface. Once your sugar glass has cooled, it's time to separate the aluminum foil from the sugar glass. Gently lift the sugar glass out of the tray and gently peel the aluminum foil away from the sugar glass. Try not to put too much pressure on your glass because it is quite brittle. Also, be careful because some of the edges may be sharp. Once you've removed all the aluminum foil, it's time to smooth out any sharp edges of your glass. Take a damp cloth or sponge and run it along the edges of the glass. This will smooth out any sharp edges so it's no longer a cut hazard. With all your edges smoothed out, you now have a completed sheet of sugar glass. With a little bit of practice making the sugar and the aluminum foil molds, you can create all kinds of creative projects, like this holiday glass house that we made for Christmas. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. The sugar you buy at the store is in a solid state, which has a crystalline structure. It looks like rock candy, but much finer. Household sugar is known as sucrose, which is a disaccharide. A disaccharide is a molecule made up of two sugars known as monosaccharides which are joined together by weak bonds. Sugar in its solid state isn't able to be turned into glass. We first need to dissolve the sugar into a liquid. This is where the water comes into play. Water is a polar solvent and because it's polar it's very good at dissolving sugar which is also polar. To make our glass we have to heat it but if we were to boil the sugar water by itself the sugar would only crystallize back into a solid crystalline state. So how do we prevent the sugar from crystallizing? This is where the cream of tartare and corn syrup come into play. Cream of tartare is an acidic chemical known as potassium bitartrate, and when mixed into sugar water, it attacks the oxygen within the disaccharide sucrose molecules, separating them into glucose and fructose monosaccharides. Separating sucrose can be done with heat alone, 
but the high temperatures required tends to burn the sugar. So how does separating sugar prevent crystallization? Crystallization occurs best between identical molecules, like the disaccharide sucrose. But when the sucrose is broken up into two different monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, crystallization has a much harder time starting. The corn syrup also helps by adding different types of long-chain sugars into our solution. Boiling the solution removes the water molecules and allows the sugar molecules to settle close together into a solid matrix. The temperature that we stop the boil at is critical for how the final product turns out. If we take our solution off the heat too soon, there will be too much water left and when the solution cools, it will be very sticky and can have the consistency of taffy. On the other hand, if we keep the sugar solution on the heat too long, we run the risk of burning the sugar, causing it to caramelize, discolor the glass, or even causing it to spontaneously crystallize, like our experiment with hot ice. With a little practice and some trial and error, you can get the glass to turn out quite clear with very little browning. Sugar glass is very brittle. Even gentle strikes with a butter knife can cause it to crack and eventually break. Well, that's it for Sugar Glass. I hope you enjoyed it. This also wraps up Season 3 of the Psy Guys. We look forward to bringing you more videos in the new year. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future episodes. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode or about science in general, let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.